And we've been reporting on the situation in uh, the US, in Brazil, India, Africa. And it seems really that the lesson is that while here in Europe we're past the first spike in cases, there are still many parts of the world where that's not the case. Yes, absolutely. And this is very peculiar for these pandemics that they run at a different course, at a different region of the country, depending on how much has been preparedness and the, the, the intensity of the spread of the infection. So I think the major challenge is still uh, here. The, the pandemic is not over because in Latin America and in the Southeast Asia is really the major concern, mainly because they haven't prepared and learned from what's been happening in China or in the Europe. And my worry is that if um, the, the Latin America and Southeast Asia will run out from from the troubles of this uh, pandemic, then the next challenge would be in the in the Africa, where the number of cases already started to go up in many regions and would be a lot more trickier to control given the poor infrastructure over there. And the World Health Organization says that Africa will see a, a steady rise in cases until there's a vaccine. What's the latest on that? So where, where are researchers at at the moment? Yes, vaccine research has been proceeding in a very fast track and record breaking in the history of, um, um, of, of the virology and infectious diseases. So at the moment, out of 130 plus vaccine candidates, those are of World Health Organization landscape, seven vaccines are the one in phase one and phase two trial. And one of the vaccine um, developed here at uh, Oxford University is running into phase three trial. So phase three trial is the last trial when everything is proven safety, efficacy, and the dosage would be the one that would be going into the manufacturing and scaling up and to be distributed. So um, uh, still there are a lot need to be done, but there are fair chances that we will have a vaccine by the end of this year. And then the World Health Organization and uh, Gavi uh, last week um, here in the UK and uh, SAPI, they are trying their best to bring this vaccine up into the scale so that everyone can be uh, immunized when it would become available. So in the meantime, of course, we're all being encouraged to uh, socially distance, to wash our hands as often as possible. Um, but as we've been reporting, uh, there are countries like Brazil where there's still a very high number of cases. They keep going up, but parts of the country are reopening. And then in the US, that's happening too. And you've got the president saying he's going to go back on the campaign trail next week. Surely that can't be good for social distancing. And then, of course, there are protests happening as well. Just how concerning is all of this? Well, this is certainly one of the major concerns because I think it would be really uh, pity and disappointing that once we start getting grip onto this infection because of uh, premature uh, opening up or having uh, relatively uh, taking the things easier, that is going to uh, pose a new challenge uh, on to spread of this infection. And that's what we have seen in Texas, for example, where the protesters have come out and they had the one uh, now um, yesterday and day before they have a significant increase in the number of cases. And this is certainly a lesson that we all need to learn and really to learn from what has been uh, the advantage of having the lockdown and the social distance in place. And if we are now in the situation in the Europe that the disease is under the control, and that is because we have put a lockdown at different scales, and that is really been helping to put the number down. I think we should not get the, the, the thing so easy. This is certainly critical state. The pandemic is not yet over, and we have to make sure that the success we have now, we should carry on with that. Now, I'd like to talk about a group of people that we don't often report on, that we haven't been reporting on so much since the start of the pandemic, and that's children. And yet we've got Reuters reporting now that hundreds of children in Indonesia are thought to have died from COVID-19. So is the coronavirus then posing more of a danger to uh, the young than previously thought? Yes, certainly. I mean, this has been a new disease. As we all know, there are a lot of information that is still not uh, pretty clear, even in the scientific community. We are learning on everyday basis. One of the things that remain really controversial is about the, uh, the, the infectivity and the transmissibility by the children. One thing is certainly clear that children can be infected, but how much it would directly have impact on to the respiratory uh, symptoms, that is uh, something that remains uh, very um, uh, elusive. But now more and more research is coming out that clearly indicating that the, the children are also uh, spreading the infection because they carry the, almost the same load of the virus in the upper respiratory tract as the adults have. 
but then there are some indirect impacts, for example, Kawasaki infection um, or, or the autoimmune infections those are already there, whether the coronavirus is increasing um, th those uh, illnesses in children or no. So a lot need to be still learned, but children certainly have a critical role in the transmission of the virus and also small clusters that we started to see recent time, especially with opening of school in few countries. And uh, lastly, is a second spike in cases in Europe inevitable? It isn't uh, inevitable, but if we start uh, uh, not respecting uh, the social distances or the control measure, or in some countries, if we start opening up too quickly, too, uh, too widely, then the chances for this uh, disease to come back would be really high. One of the major emphasis that all been, all, uh, with the scientific community always been emphasizing is that still 80 to 90 percent of people in the Europe still are not infected. They don't have still antibodies in their uh, in their bodies. So one, whenever there is any change in the social behavior, these people would likely be to get infection. And bearing therapeutics and the vaccines, the chances for them to contract the infection and same uh, trend that we have seen in, in February, March would still likely to happen.